All right. Let's say you have some water and you put the water in an ice cube tray and you put the ice cube tray in the freezer and you let the water freeze and then you take it out. What's happened to the water? This is not a trick question. It's a metaphor. All right. So just, just be patient with me. You take it out. The water's ice. It has changed state. It has changed phases. It has gone through what we call a phase transition from a liquid to a solid state. Okay, no biggie. Everyone gets this. It's kind of cool. Look at the ice cube. Like, if do you have an ice cube right now? Like, like pull it out of your drink. You know, pull it out of the freezer. Look at an ice cube. The ice cube will not be perfect. It won't be crystal clear like you can see right there. You can look inside of the ice cube and you can see fractures and lines and, and cracks, imperfections in the ice cube. These imperfections come from the imperfection of the phase transition itself. So when water is a liquid, all the water molecules are just doing approximately this. This is my impression of liquid chemistry. They're just doing whatever they want. When they turn into an ice cube, they all line up. All the water molecules line up to form a crystal lattice. They, they, they boom, 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 boom. So instead of being all wiggly, they're line, 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 nut, nut, and then another row and another row. That's how they become a solid. But this doesn't happen at the exact same way with the exact same lineup all uniformly across the ice cube. Instead, you get like uh, what we call nucleation points where a little random part of the of the water, like this part right over here, will say, okay, I'm ready, I'm cold enough, I'm ready to do the deed, I'm ready to become a solid. So it starts lining up. And then its neighbors attach that and attach that and attach that. And it lines up in a certain way. It forms a crystal in a certain way. But that has to spread from that little point out through the rest of the ice cube. So it's expanding here. It's becoming ice from that nucleation point. But what if in that time, another random point over here is like, you know what? I'm going to turn into an ice cube. I'm ready to make the plunge. I'm ready to do it. And it starts lining up, but it doesn't line up the same way. It says it lines up this way. And then its neighbors line up in the exact same way. So over here, you have ice lined up this way. And over here, you have ice lined up this way. And then the ice meets. They're both ice. They're both frozen. They're both solid, but they made different crystal arrangements. And there's going to be a place in the ice cube where those two regions meet. There's going to be a boundary. And that is what you're seeing in those imperfections in the ice cube. You're seeing the boundary between two different ways that the water turned into an ice, that it changed its trend, that it changed its phase. I want you to take this metaphor, scale it up to a temperature of like a quadrillion degrees and apply it to the very early universe. You see, I'm not making this up. We're not talking about ice and water though. We're talking about the fundamental forces of nature. See, all of our forces of nature Electromagnetism, weak nuclear, strong nuclear, and gravity represent certain fundamental symmetries in the universe. Certain mathematical structures that apply across space or across time or across space time or, or have certain fundamental relationships built within them that we call symmetries. Each individual force represents its own symmetry. And what we found over the past few decades is that as you increase the temperature and increase the density, that different forces will merge together, that there's higher level symmetries that represent groups of forces, not just individual ones. And the easiest one to access is the electroweak force. This is the combination at high temperatures between electromagnetism and weak nuclear. In the very, very early universe, we believe that all four forces were unified under a single symmetry that we don't know yet. We don't understand, but we think it's there. And then as it cooled, as the universe expanded, the forces of nature broke off. First gravity broke off, then strong nuclear, then weak nuclear, and then we had the four today. As these forces broke off, 
these were phase transitions. The universe changed phase from this high order symmetric state into the broken state that it is today. This may not have happened uniformly throughout the entire universe. There may have been a little pocket of the universe, the very early universe, you know what? I'm done with having unified forces and I'm just going to, I'm going to split one of my forces off. Boom. I'm going to do it and I'm going to fall in it this way. But then another pocket of the universe over here, be like, you know what? I'm also done having unified forces. I'm cool enough. I'm cold enough. I'm ready for the forces to split. And it does so, but in a different mathematical configuration. The forces are still the same. The end result is the same, but the symmetry in the mathematics is broken in a different way over here and over here. And over here, it's like a little nucleation point. And over here is a little nucleation point, and then they meet. The place where these different ways of breaking the forces, of breaking the symmetry, of breaking the unification happen, the boundaries is something we call topological defects. Defects. These are defects in space-time itself. These are wrinkles. They can have different dimensions and different shapes, and one of the most common ones to be predicted is a one-dimensional defect in space-time called a cosmic string. This is different than the string in string theory. Those are called super strings, although there might be a way in string theory in order to turn strings into super strings, but that's a different episode. Today we're talking about cosmological defects cosmic strings they may have been formed in the early universe and they may persist to the present day that's right the universe today somewhere out there might contain a defect in space-time generated in one of the most violent episodes in our universe in the earliest histories of our cosmos Thank you so much for watching. I know it was a little bit of a tease. About next week, I'm going to talk more about cosmic strings themselves. Today, I just wanted to get, get that idea across and how cosmic strings are made. If you enjoyed the show, please don't forget to contribute to my Patreon. Uh, subscribe, like, do all the usual YouTuber stuff. Or not, you know what? You do you.